and welcome to another episode Drawing With Me. Today's subject and model is Sydney Sweeney. She was in Euphoria and The White Lotus, which I absolutely love. Um, she was in season one, it was absolutely awesome. I have had this photo saved for a while. I just really love like the emotion. I think it was when she was on Euphoria of the um, eye makeup. But yeah, I love it and turn this into a piece of art. So I thought it'd be a good idea to start off with the drawing and then maybe in a later episode do a painting of her as well. Um, so I'll go ahead as usual. Um, I'm going to duplicate the image. That way one of them can be black and white. If you're on the iPad, I go to mono and then export it to Procreate. You can also go a step further and actually add, make it a blur. I added just 1%, but I went to my adjustments and Gaussian Blur, and then brought it up to just 1%. You can go up higher if you want. This particular image didn't need anything more than that. Um, but that way you can really see less detail. A lot of times when we're blocking in and starting our drawing or painting, we wanna see everything very simplified. So you can use tools in Photoshop and your Procreate to edit things and make them appear that way. And that way you can then maybe end or halfway through or whenever, go back to the actual detailed photo. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and I do have my image right next to me so I can be glancing over back and forth. Like I've mentioned in my other videos, I really try to avoid a lot of super perfection or detail. I'm seeing everything very as just big shapes. Um, make sure that you're also really kind of squinting down. You don't need to squint like this, so you don't want to get a bunch of wrinkles. Um, but if you just kind of like just close your lids so you're really just seeing through your um, kind of eyelashes, it'll really just simplify things. And if you haven't already tried that before, try it because again, it breaks it down. It eliminates detail that we really want to save for later. Um, so it's a great way to train your eye to see things, especially in the very beginning. So yeah, this is a sham cloth. Chamois, I think, I think there's a more technical term for it, but I call it my sham cloth. And it really can just pick up, especially, I really love the brow line because it just tells really the emotion, which any drawing can. And it's kind of, you know, something to, to learn and to practice because then if you want to, if you already have a model or an image that you like, but you want to add a little bit more motion, you can add things like the eyebrows kind of furrowing and doing different things. So if you can practice, you'll kind of have more muscle memory and be able to execute that without necessarily having a perfect image like that. Go darker on these sides because I know and look kind of not too graceful in the beginning. That's okay. This willow stick is very forgiving, so it's best to just not be afraid of making mistakes because there's a lot of room for error. I am still keeping in mind, especially these lines of measurement because these will always stay parallel to one another for the most part. I still think that she needs to make them down a little bit. Um, I always like to keep the head of right about here that way I still have room to move my subject down if I need to because I find that that's usually what I have to do. It's okay. So I'm focusing on these biggest shapes and these bigger shapes are really the biggest shadow areas. And this will help me get likeness. And really what we're creating right here is someone's, um, you know, their, their likeness at a very simplified level. It's, you know, you want to be able to see if you, you know, if you're at the airport for the most part, if you see someone from across the room and you know that that's your, you know, your friend, your sibling, your parent that you're meeting, 
um, you know from a distance that it's them because they we all have our inter individual gait, our walk, everything about us. And so in the beginning stages of a drawing, I really try to think of that, things that would be just so unique to that person. Um, look for those as you're going, especially in these beginning stages. It's good to analyze your photo in the beginning and really kind of study it. But in these beginning stages, that's what I'm really doing too. I'm kind of feeling around with my tool and my pencil. A lot of shadow right here, which there usually isn't, but because of the light coming right here, and also that's just gonna make it more compelling. I feel like a more a compelling painting or drawing will really show off the form. So all of our lights, all of our darks, there's other ways to achieve compelling paintings without that, but, or drawings, but I personally really like to focus on form and my lights and darks. I'm going maybe a little bit darker than you would kind of think in the beginning, because as we add other, other colors, or as we add other values, everything else is gonna be relative. So all everything that I'm adding that's dark is actually going to change and alter. It's gonna look darker, it's gonna look lighter in certain areas. But I find that a biggest thing that I end up doing is darkening things, going having to go back and darkening values and adjusting and so if I just can push it a little bit more in the beginning, it ends up being less work because I just know that everything's in relation is going to change. And that comes with practice. So the more that you practice, the more that you can kind of gauge. Same thing with driving. You know, when we first start driving, we don't understand or where we're, you know, how much to turn the wheel or how much pressure to be pushing on the, the, the brakes. But the more you practice it, the more that you're doing it, the more you can do that in 20 minutes later after years or six months, whatever, you kind of forget you've been driving for the last 20 minutes. So same thing with drawing. You just start to be more intuitive about it, just like driving would be. And as I'm watching my reference, I'm looking for all of these connections. I'm seeing like almost imaginary lines that are connecting these two. And I really encourage you to to try that yourself and to try to, you know, analyze and study the people around you. You're, you know, don't be going and staring at random people at places and freaking them out, but you know, your friends, your family, like really analyze like where everything connects, you know, cause we have all of those things. And if you can really study that and get used to seeing that way, it'll really show in your work. Okay, so I'm just continuing to move around, check my drawing. Right now I am focused on my values and everything, but I'm also very focused on, um, on my drawing. I wanna make sure everything is in place before I start to move into any detail. 
because then it's just easier later. I really like using a brush to soften edges or, or remove or change around. And this is just a really cheapo synthetic brush. I don't even, it's, um, since it's dry media, I haven't even like rinsed it or anything like that. I kind of like having that extra little bit in there. And also drawing and painting is all about just laying in layers. So just know that as you're softening, moving stuff around, to kind of keep adding and put a paper towel right here because I find that I'm holding it and adding too many oil prints. Okay, so I'm actually going to use this stump. I haven't really used one in a while for this, but I wanna, instead of just wiping it off with a brush or anything, I want it to go in. This is wipe off. And this is doing a good job of that. So I'm kind of uh, ghosting my image right now. All right, so I think that I am very happy with this piece. Um, I am a little bit different than the majority of my pieces, but I think that is great to do. I like that there's a little bit more uh, movement and emotion within her. And, you know, I really kind of wanted a little bit more of a painterly sort of look. Um, and also I think it kind of adds a little bit to maybe the chaos of what's going on with her and everything. Um, whereas, you know, with this one that I did, you know, she, it's a little bit more of a sweet sort of, you know, image and, you know, but also I could totally have this sort of style and maybe make this look a little bit darker. So, um, that is what I do enjoy about doing these videos because they are a chance to try something different, something new, and that just was what happens and what comes with practice. Um, so I really encourage you to try something out. Um, if you have any suggestions, any questions, comments, please leave them below. And thank you so much for watching.